So in addition to all the updates for Boombox, I've made quite a few additions to Bustbuster as well. And some of these are just to keep up with the uh, the new features of Boombox. Like a few things had to be kind of rewritten in order to work with the new multi-impact. So now in Boombox, as I'm sure most people have heard, there's this option to stagger your impacts uh, by an attribute attached to incoming velocity curves. Now for trails in Bus Tester, that really didn't didn't really change very much. The the way that the trails are emitted is directly from the debris source, uh, and it's sort of by nature it's just uh, as long as the debris source is present, those trails are going to emit. And you have more controls than that, but that's the basis of it. Now chunks were different; those were always supposed to just. Uh, let me show you the show you the settings. You had an emission frame. Um, and basically from the impact frame, the chunks were just present for either one or two frames or the, the emission source of the chunks was only, um, present for the amount of frames that you set. So it was never a, um, continuous thing. And the problem that arose with this is if you just made your chunks continuously emit, um, basically the, the debris source that was back here would just, you would just constantly emit these uh, debris chunks rather than uh, only emit them for one, two, three, how many ever frames from the impact frame. So this has been totally rewritten to allow for um, at each impact source, like each of these, each of these curves from, from that impact frame, which is defined by an attribute leading into boombox. Now this emission frame will pick up that and say, okay, if you define one, it's going to emit at every impact source at its impact frame, it's going to emit one frame of chunks. Or if it's set to five, it'll emit five frames of chunks from that point. Uh, so that was a big rewrite um, that is really worth having. So I found one last thing that's worth mentioning with these updates. Um, it's a little bit of a bug, but it's it's an easy workaround. So if you're using Bus Duster with Boombox, and this is how it would normally look uh, with the multi impacts on, you've got your chunks coming from every impact. But if you tick on uh, the delete connected faces inside of Boombox, what you're going to see is, is you're, you're not really going to get an error. You, there's no error message, but your chunks are only going to emit from your first impact. And the reason behind that is there's a internally in Bus Duster, the debris source, which is driving all this, operates off of an age attribute. And that age attribute gets really screwed up when these internal faces are created kind of on the fly as, uh, as they're doing with a delete connected faces, that age attribute gets really screwed up. So that's the that's the problem. The fix is to just um, leave this off while you're working in Bus Duster. And then you get your simulation that you're happy with. And then what you would do is you would either cache this in the chunk settings. And this really only affects the chunks in the pyro. Um, the trails are going to be fine. So you could cache it within this cache tab, or you could cache it after the fact. And then once you're happy with your chunk simulation and that's all cached out, then just come back to Bus Duster, or come back to Boombox, put your connected faces, delete those, and then, you know, your render as you need to. So it's just sort of an order of operations uh, hiccup with uh, the way these are set up. In future iterations of this, I'm going to try to fix it. But if not, that's the workaround. And similarly, I don't have this cached, but similarly, the uh, the pyro uh, works the same way. So now in the sourcing, this uh, if you're using multi impacts, you have to let me let me turn this on. I'll, it may take just a second to calculate, but it'll be worth showing. So bear with me for one second. So now if you have multiple impacts, you select this, you tick this on, and when you tick it on, you get this information that says, when using multiple impacts, uncheck the limit source range. Where, and previously what the limit source range would do, would it would basically say, um, at our one single impact, only emit um, density and, and velocity for X number of frames. Well, now what this what that number of frames field controls is at each impact point only emit those needed volumes for for this amount of frames. So it's similar to chunks. Um, it's a necessary update. Uh, yeah, and it's 
again, you, there's nothing really you have to worry about other than if you're using multiple impacts with Boombox, just tick this and then turn this one off. And there's directions to, to remind you to do that. And then it should work as you would expect it to. So that was a, another um, update here. Now let me turn Pyro back off, go back to Chunks and Trails. And we mentioned in the Boombox update video how we've got um, vertex color that can be applied within uh, Boombox now. So since that can now be applied by default, that gets inherited here. And the um, let me go to my Trails because it's the most easily seen and tick this off. Um, so if you don't want to keep your, your color, if you'd rather just define that by this gradient, um, you can by all means do that. And you can do that with uh, your any of the colors you want and your option to do that over life or randomly is still there. Uh, but the nice thing here is, let me turn this back to grayscale. So if you have your incoming color, but you still would like to sort of um, vary that, but via this ramp, you can. You just take this on and let's set our ramp the right way. So now we have, you can see at the, as the, as the life of the trails progress, it sort of fades across this ramp. Or if you want that uh, randomization app, if you, if you want that, um, variance of the color, your incoming color to happen randomly, you can just tick random and that gives you a variation to this inherited color and chunks works the same way. So I won't go into the chunks. And the last thing that we're going to, well, actually the next to the last thing is the collision. So collisions between all these particles and the, uh, fractured pieces. That's always been available as an option. Let's, if we look at our simulation, I'm still in trails. Uh, that's always been an option. So you can just tick on this collide with fractured pieces, but the UI and the, f and the way it functions has been uh, rewritten as well for better accuracy. So when I was looking at some of these tests, so you can see like this piece right here, uh, those chunks that are on it and the particles as well. And my early tests, when this other piece moved them, those pieces just like like the fracture piece just slid and all the particles just stood they just stayed where they were and it, it, it wasn't correct so this has been fixed um but it is it is a bit um it's more intense to calculate and it takes a little bit longer so um you still have the previous method so now what we've got is rather than this used to just say collide with objects and i think there was a box that said more accurate collisions. So now what you do is you select what type of collision geometry you want. Do you want to use your proxy geometry or your high res? And you can pick either one. And then you can say, do you want to, uh, how do you want the collisions to be calculated? Like the old fast way, you know, it was a little bit inaccurate, but it was really quick. Um, do you want to use surface collisions or volume collisions? And that's all you, that's all you do. And you can Proxy is always going to be a little bit faster than high res. High res is going to be more accurate. Sometimes your high res uh, surface is going to be more accurate than your, or sometimes your high res surface could be accurate enough and that might be faster than the um, proxy volume. So you just, you can just toggle back and forth between the settings and know that proxy is faster, but a little bit less accurate. Um, and these go in order of fastest, least accurate to slowest, most accurate. So uh, with a combination of those two drop downs, you will get something that works for you. And then lastly, um, I get this, I got this question on YouTube. Um, if we just, if we untemplate this, the question was, Hey, where did my fracture go? Well, why and and the real heart of the question was why isn't there a option to view my fractured geometry? The the real reason is because it's it's slow. Like it, when you have to merge these in uh, Houdini, it bogs down because of differences in um, attributes and all kinds of different things. So you can see this is playing six frames a second, maybe seven. Now this on its own pl will play back real time. And if we look at our bus duster, but we turn off this this new fracture, um, this new fracture option. If we turn it off, this is going to play real time as well. So I didn't want people to think that there was a performance issue um, just because you're viewing 
the fracture and because there there is an overhead but it's it's not due to the calculation of the it's not the simulation it's it's just the way that merges work and stops when you're merging different kinds of geometry with different attributes um, so my preferred method is always just to template the um, your fracture because now it's, it's not real time but it's drastically faster than the other way um, and when you go to render anyway, you're never going to render anything out of this first input. You need to export these things as your chunks, your trails, and your pyro separately because in your renderer, those are treated separately. So I never thought it was a, a big deal to not have this fracture there, but people asked for it, so there it is. Um, it may be useful. I don't recommend using it, but just for that speed hit, but if you want to, it's there. And um, I guess the follow-up is, well, you know, when I template my, you know, I'm sure what will happen is I'll get the the question, hey, when I template my boombox or my RBD bullet solver, it doesn't look like that. It's just a viewport setting. Tap D in your viewport and come to this um, markers menu, set display options for template geometry. By default, uh, let me just revert this to default. By default, it looks like that. Um, let me hit my background back to dark. Markers, go to template geometry. This is going to be the templated stuff in your scene and set it to smooth shaded, tick off ghost and faded, however you want to view it. And there you go. Or the, you know, the other way is you export this out via a null, bring it into a, another object on your object level, and then just view it that way. So there is one last update, and this one is the one that actually took quite a while to uh, to figure out, and that's what uh, this is what's caused the delay. So um, normally, when you set up your bus duster with uh, Boombox or the RBD bullet solver, for that matter, it only works when you have um, the two directly connected. Like you can't have anything interrupting this uh, this node tree. And the reason being is that the all the gravity, um, time scale, several other settings for the simulations are being pulled directly from here via this uh, this first input. So um, I realize that there at times there comes a need to interrupt this, whether you want to cache it or uh, maybe what what I was dealing with was uh, some pieces that would never really settle into place and I developed this other uh, little utility tool that I would uh, use to to settle those into place but what was then happening was then I couldn't bus duster didn't work anymore so I fixed that so now let's just break this with a null and this you know this null could represent anything any type of uh, edit that you may make here so you see what would happen. You we lose all our gravity settings. This just we lose the ground plane. We lose all kinds of stuff. So it's just not working. But if you may have seen it when I connected this, let me I'll just disconnect it so you can see again. Let me go to frame one. So this isn't calculating anything. So right now these are our global settings. You drop a null in between there, and what happens is this RBD path field comes up and it says it's got you know it's got a little comment here it says when connections between the boombox or bullet solver are interrupted, use this RBD field to point back to the boombox or the bullet solver. So at that point, all you have to do is drag your either your boombox or your RBD bullet solver into this path, or you can navigate to it this way. And now everything's happy again. Um, you can just use it as you normally would. And that's really all you need to, that's all you need to know about this is that there are times when you'll need to interrupt this um, and when that happens you can just uh, redirect bus duster to your simulation paths via this uh, this little uh, field here and then everything will work as as usual so that was a um, it's a kind of a fringe case and it took a long time to figure out but now it works well um, so that hopefully if you run into um, situations where you need to cache and you don't want to use the internal cache for whatever reason, you know, we, we do have this input cache here. Um, if for one reason or another you find yourself needing to break these connections, now you can do so and still be able to, to work properly. So those are the updates. Um, thanks so much for watching. 
If you haven't bought this already, check it out on Gumroad. It's really, um, both of these tools, both Boombox and Bus Duster are really useful. They really simplify uh, RBD workflows. So check those out, uh, pick it up if you haven't already. If you have picked this up in the past, uh, check your email from Gumroad. You should have um, instructions on how to download these updates from uh, your library. Uh, so yeah, look for further updates. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me here on YouTube. Subscribe so you can make sure that you get uh, news about new updates, new tutorials that drop, project files that I give away to customers. So follow me all the places to get all those updates. Thanks so much.